So you believe, and so do I, that the world is going to go to a massive depression. It's not, it's not belief. I'm, I can see the graphs. And so tell me what is it that you see that most people need to think about right now? What are you saying? Prove to me why you think the world is going to go. Um, I think it's two parts. First, I think the first thing to do when there's a decline in the market, you have to focus only on opportunities. In a decline, there are a lot of opportunities. Because if somebody is closing his business, you can buy the business. As long as it will be worth something one day, right? And you need to understand what to buy, especially in the digital world. Okay, when with the digital transformation, something that can you transfer to digital and you can buy for 10% of the price, invest another 20% and then create some digital out of it, then it will have a value. If you have a business model around it that you can sell it to a big company like Amazon or like, you know, now you have an exit strategy. And I think at these times, you have to hold to a lot of cash in your pockets. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to, 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 to take all the cash that you have all around you, put it somewhere and be ready for the market. There, there, is, there is a recession. It started already four years ago. It did not start now. People just see it now. So let's assume you can see Gap is closing 2,000 stores in three months. Abercrombie so closed, I don't know, 3,000 3, stores uh, in, in three months. But you see that things are happening. So let's say you take uh, the real estate will go down of those, those areas. You go in Fifth Avenue in New York, you see stores are closed and nobody's renting them. Mm. Now is the time to buy you know, the, these places you know, because it's an asset. When the, when, the, when the economy will restructure itself, but look what I'm saying, the economy will restructure itself. It, it will not come back. The economy that we know is dead. Yes, of course, the economy is always about transactions and banks and loans and everything else. But in this world, banks will not give the loans. It will be on the blockchain. And so, the, so something will change in this market, okay? Um, and, and I think now is the time to get loose of the assets that are not important for you anymore, not making good enough money, get rid of them, take the cash and wait for the big opportunities. And now in order to understand the big opportunities, you have to search around, but not without understanding the future of digitization. Mm. Because if you say, oh, I, I can buy this restaurant because it's now 10% of its value. But please think, do you want the restaurant to be the same because it lost money? Okay, and it's losing money on recession. And if, if in recession, uh, somebody is losing money, it means that it's not strong enough, okay, not powerful enough, not cheap enough, not, I don't know, whatever. But now if you buy the restaurant and say, I will put there a robot chef and I will lower my cost and I will buy better ingredients, I will win the market. Because in the end, some people will go to restaurants, you know, not all of them will not have money to go to restaurants, right? So, but you have to be smart. How to connect this digital transformation into this uh, regular business world that we know and understand that this, this recession is for a reason. It's in order to make this world even more digital. Mm. You see, look. So what I, numbers I, 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 I will give you an example. Let me give you an example. I went to Barnes & Nobles in Los Angeles like four months ago. I wanted to buy a book. And I said, do you have the book? And this woman, she says to me, no, well, we don't have the book. Can you order it for me and send me, send it to Israel? Because I live in Israel. I'm traveling all the time, but I'm in Israel. You know, my base is in Israel. Can you send it to me? She said, no, we can't do this. I can order it. And, and next week, if you come over here, you can pick up the book. So in front of her eyes, I took my iPhone. I went to Amazon. I opened the app. Click, 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 click. I got the book before I got to Israel. You know, stupid Barnes and Nobles. They still don't understand the digital transformation. <laughs> and you know why? Because they think, they think like a store. They think like a store. They had a store. They understood what a store means. Now, Mr. Amazon, okay, Jeff Bezos, he never had a store. He was thinking digital day one. That's why he holds a company of one trillion, more than one trillion. It will become two trillion dollars in the next two years. When those those little companies they will die because they're in the they're thinking analog and not digital. Mm. No, if you have the money today, and you know how to mix the digital world, okay, with the content that there is there that you can buy for a very low price, 
because the prices will go low. You know, when there's a recession, there's a recession. No buying power in the market, everything goes down. Okay, because people are, the people who work for Abercrombie lost their jobs, they will not find a job now, they don't have money to buy from you and something else, like a pizza, right? So this is the time, aggregate your cash, get rid of whatever looks to you like, you know, shaky, put all the cash in the bank, have cash in your hands, because with cash you are king when there is a recession, because you can buy everything for 90% less of the price of the, of the cost. So as um, long as you can transform it into something digital also, right, something right. technological, right. this is the essence of it. I love it. What numbers are you seeing that makes you believe that we are in a recession or heading into a depression? Just look at the number of stores being closed in the past year in the United States, more than 70,000. That's, that's the number you're looking at. That's part of the numbers we're looking at. Yes, we're looking at more numbers. Okay. We see, we see cities that don't have enough uh, tax and they cannot invest in education, they cannot invest in something else. They, look, there, there's an issue here, okay, because it's a cycle, you know, it, it, it impacts all, all cycles of the economy. Sure, sure. There, there's, okay. a, there's a video you should watch. It was, yeah. it was made by Ray Dalio. You know Ray Dalio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are you looking for the video? Um, I have the privilege of working with a lot of futurists and yes. from all the ones that are out there, you know, there's 20% that the top 20% that I think are like, they have something to say. I How want the economic machine works in 30 minutes? Wait a second. Okay. I found it. Say it again. So uh, from all the futures out in the market, one of my favorite guys is actually from one of the companies I do consulting with called Tata Consulting Services, TCS. Tata, yeah. I'm at NTCS, there's a guy called Frank, and he's their so-called futurist. And I just love Frank, just a brilliant guy. He's Italian, he's just a lovely human being. Anyways, Frank uh, does a lot of talk on the autonomous car, the autonomous truck, mm -hmm. and like how the, like in, in Canada, Loblaws bought 25 autonomous trucks, not yesterday, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Walmart's there like that. But what's unique in Frank's conversations as of a month ago was now they've completed the first autonomous dispatch, uh, um, the car, the truck thing, using a robot uh, or artificial intelligence dispatcher. Yes. So it's not even the truck driver that we, we, we are firing and the value of the truck driver is mm -hmm. going down. Mm -hmm. It's also the dispatchers now completely you know, it's, it's run by AI. And I'm just thinking that's so fascinating. And most people I see on the street, walking down the street, I think they're still trying to figure out what is AI. But most people have been linked to, to AI is now gonna be impacting my personal bank account savings. Or it's gonna be like eliminating my job. Yes. And I think the ones that even have kind of come to that conclusion they don't understand how fast it's going and they don't even know what to do. Yes. And I know from the U.S., uh, uh, the, the uh, people who are running for election right now in the U.S., there's a few of them that are talking about it as part of their political agenda. But really what they're talking about is this big shifts in the economy and the way we think, where we go, we tax Google or we tax Amazon or we tax the robot because somebody has to pay the tax and then pay employees or human beings a basic level of income. But I'm not confident the shift at a system, at a system for a system to shift. I don't think it's gonna shift as fast, fast as I as a consumer and a human being need it to shift. It's not, it's not important if it's fast or not. And let me explain this. If, if there will be 1 million people losing jobs this year, okay, in some sector, Okay, like uh, clothing. It's one of the people that don't have a job. Yeah. Let's assume they're going to try and find a job. Yeah. Maybe 50% will not find a job. Because there are too many of them. Yeah. Unless businesses. Yeah. yeah. Unless stores, let's say. Okay? Of any kind. So, the moment this happens, it's not a lot. So, if you have an app that can help you to lose weight, 
and this app has 25 million, okay, um, uh, 25 million uh, users, it means that 1 million uh, nutritionists lost jobs, lost their 25 clients. We, we need to understand numbers. Just look at the numbers. It doesn't matter if it's fast because, you know, it accelerates itself. Mm. Now, 100,000 people with lost jobs don't have a job. They don't have money to buy things. So other jobs will go uh, out of business and others. So this is a, what we call a snowball. Mm -hmm. And it be, will become faster every year. And you will see that when, when 2004, in 2014, 1 billion people will lose jobs. Mm. Remember what I have said. I can see the numbers. You see, I come from systems dynamics. I studied in MIT system dynamics. What we see is a trend. What we see is uh, patterns, you know, in, in, in systems. This is what I've learned. What you see now, it will have a snowball effect. Because one, one million nutritionists and one million sellers don't have jo a job now. Mm. So they want to find a job. But there are no jobs for them because the jobs they can do, technology can do. Unless you are a smarter researcher or developer in the world of technology, okay, then you will still have a job. If you are not in those fields, within 20 years, no one will have a job besides of those who are the innovators of That's those technologies. True. That's true. So, so people go and they study today coding, yeah. coding. The, the, the length of the time that people who write code will survive in the market is less than 10 years because technology can write code today. So it's just a matter of time that all of them will lose jobs. They're still in high demand. What will, what will stay there is that we will, need, we will need a lot of uniquely talented innovators in the field of research, you know, science, technology, arts, you know, whatever. But there is a snowball effect. And you know what happens in snowball effect? What? When you see the ball, it's too late. Wow. You know, wow. it's too late when you see the ball because it starts very small. You don't see it. You don't feel it. Oh, you say, oh this little thing, you know, scrolls down the mountain. But then when it comes heavier, it goes faster and it goes faster and it becomes bigger and faster. So what you see today, even the little, you say, oh, there are a couple of autonomous cars and a couple of autonomous trucks. So let's say we have 1,000 of them this year. But next year, there will not be 2,000. There will be 4,000. And the next year, there will be 10,000. The next year, there will be 100,000. Because they can make them cheaper, better, and it's low cost you know, for the owners of the businesses. You can lower, lower price for everything. And you will need to lower prices for everything because people will not have buying power. When you look at systems, you need to analyze the system as a system. There is a snowball. But it's not a snowball that like in the past, you know, there was a recession and then everything came, came back and everything was fine. This time, it will not be fine. This is the recession that they can, can, can help millions, hundreds of millions to drown, okay? You know, in, 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 the, in the ocean. I call it the tsunami effect. There is a tsunami. Before the tsunami, everything looks quiet. When it comes, it's too late. I love, I love that. Oh, so the people that you talk to them now, they don't see it. They still don't understand that people rather buy from boxes coming their, to their home by Amazon than go to a store and measure the shirt. They don't care about measuring the shirt anymore in the store. There's still some old people like us, they do it, but that's it. Yes, people will need you know, to have friends yeah. and to go out and to go to restaurants and do things. But it will change. So this tsunami, snowball effect, okay, it's being called the butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. The butterfly effect has started already. Mm -hmm. Read about it and you will understand. So if I'm, um, I'm just trying to think about human beings, or at least people that I'll be sharing this video with. If I'm a consultant, of any kind of consultant, marketing consultant, whatever, sales consultant, uh, or if I'm um, I don't know, real estate agent, pick, pick it, uh, pick whatever you want. What should I be doing right now so that a year from now I'll have some kind of an income or job, three years from now I'll have an income or job. What are the three things I should be doing right now? Study everything you, you can about digital transformation and change yourself to this world.
but really understanding not as a user, but as a creator. Well, everybody knows, you know, if you use iPhone all day long, you are already in the digital transformation, but you are in the digital transformation as a user. Not as a creator. Not as a creator. So how do you become a creator? You take your job, you find people in, of research and development, scientific research and technology development, and you create something like a service or anything else that can be connected to the digital transformation and your, and your expertise. Right. You take expertise, you take digital, you connect them. If you're not there, you will not survive. You will not survive. 90% of humans that I know, and I, and I know the highly intelligent ones, they don't understand. Even Barnes and Nobles don't understand digital transformation until today. Wow. They could have killed Amazon on the first year easily. They were rich. He was poor. They could have copied what he did, put a lot of money in marketing, and kill him. But because they did not understand digital transformation, and he was already there, they lost their market to him, and everybody else is losing their market to Amazon. So what I'm saying, there will be big opportunities in the world. We will have to make low-cost products, good quality, low-cost, fast to get, Okay, you don't have to go and find a woman that will give you a service in you know, how to lose weight. App, click, that's it. And all those apps, they talk to each other. So there's a lot of business there. What I'm saying, you need to understand and learn and study everything about digital transformation. Must, as a user, not as a user, as a, as a creator. I love it. I love it. I love it. This makes sense? This makes People sense. don't understand. They think they understand digital. They don't understand. Ask 90% of, of intelligent people what is blockchain and they cannot even explain it to you. Yeah, decentralized data, yeah, they, they can talk about it. They don't know how it works or what the opportunities there to become rich. If you, uh, know how to, you know that if you know how to cook great mashed potato that nobody yeah. can in the world, on the blockchain you can become a billionaire overnight. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just yeah. for fish potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so we, if you, we have to go to a school to learn about digital transformation six hours per day for 365 days. And then, and only then, we'll understand what kind of people we want to collaborate with. Today, when you look for partners in any job that you have, find a researcher, you know, scientific research expert, find somebody who knows how to write code and robotics, and create a business with them. These are three people, the research, the developer, and the experts. When um, you connect it together, that's it. Of course, you need to have marketers and you need to have other people you know, in the business, but this is the essence of everything. By the way, research and marketing is the same today. Let me ask you a quick question about this. Uh, about a few years ago, I was doing some consulting with the CEO of a very large data center company across North America. And when I was sitting beside his laptop, he opens up his laptop and he goes to his competitor's website. Yes. And then he's trying to show me what they're doing compared to what the competitor's doing. Yes. Just I look at the competitor's website. Now, happily, I'm not in a web design business, so I couldn't care. But what I'm noticing is today's competition does not come from your competitor. Maybe 12 years ago it did, maybe 18 years ago it did, but I don't know any advertising agency that could see Google becoming their competitor or Facebook taking their market share. Yes, yes. You know what I'm, I don't know any taxi company that had the foresight to see Uber will become their biggest competitor. I, I can go on and on. In fact, Going, uh, you and me did a video interview, like I can remember, maybe a year ago on Human 3.0. And an example you gave me was you wanted to lose weight and you went and you used the app as a way to lose weight. And your alternative option was to go to the gym and hire a trainer for $1,000 a month or whatever trainer charges. Yes. I don't, I'm not convinced every trainer that I know or any trainer that I know in the whole industry in North America gets up in the morning thinking or having the foresight to say, I am competing against the app. Yeah. What can I do to get better at it, 
get better at my art so that I can survive. So having given you that background, my, given that context, my question to you is, how do human beings get the foresight to be able to see this? Because I think, I think that's where a lot of people are just mentally blocked. They don't have the foresight. And maybe I'm using the wrong uh, word to even ask. I, I will connect it into three elements and give you an example. And look, what we do in our stages program for children, we train the brain of children to do pattern recognition. Mm. Because when you see the patterns, you know exactly what will happen. Right. Right? It's a pattern. You see, one, one store closed, and three closed. It's a pattern. What's happening? Which areas? Okay, where? You see, the point is, on one thing, if you want to survive in the future, okay, or want to understand the future, or want to collaborate with the future, you need to understand everything about digital transformation, as I said. You must learn all the skills about disruptive innovation. You must be totally disruptive. You know that last year, two years ago, I received the Disruptive Innovator of the Year by oh, Rebecca, Rebecca, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm taught, some, some people, normal people will call me crazy because I think in an awkward way, but I don't think awkward. I think the way we will need to think in the future. So for the people of today, it's awkward. So if you go into pattern recognition and, and stuff like that and, and using data in a smart way, and if you are a disruptive innovator, which is and a little bit of intuition of some kind. It's, somehow it's intuitive. And you understand the digital transformation of the world. Then you will understand why Uber might succeed. Uber is not a taxi. It's a platform. It's a platform for what? I think for delivery of anything. Food. Exactly. But Uber cannot make good money right now. Right. An app like Uber, anyone can, can create. It's just a simple app, for God's sake. The point is not that. Uber can convince the investors to lose money like, like Jeff Bezos was able to convince his, his to lose money enough until the times of autonomous vehicles. Uber wants to control this market. Uber wants to control the autonomous car business. Wow. That's why they're losing money everywhere in the world. They don't care about the drivers. It will make some money. One day, all of them will be dismissed immediately. All these people that have a car and they have an Uber. Uber wants to control the market because they want to control the autonomous car business. And why? Because the autonomous car business, it's not about um, moving people from one point to, it, to point A to point B. It's about the content inside the car. It's not a car, it's a moving box. Forget about the car, a car has a, has a wheel. Yeah. In, a the box, in those boxes, a lot of artists and engineers will put a lot of efforts to make your life amazing inside the box that will move from one place to another. This box will take exactly 20 minutes from here to here. Every child from five years old will be able to drive it. Everyone can go on this car and you will get it from Uber. And you will say, okay, I want to get to work. How long will it take me if I leave home at 8.30? It will tell you 37 minutes with Uber. Okay, can I order a car with breakfast? And the car will come with breakfast. You know, and the breakfast will be McDonald's. Or can I have a car with a gym? I, have, I didn't have time to train myself this morning. Or can I have a car with a swimming pool inside against you know, a stream? that I can swim for 20 minutes and then take a shower within the same car. It's not a car. The content, the entertainment, the business orientation of these machines are going to change totally the world. Because it's not about a car that will move you from point A to point B. It's about what will happen between point A and B that will be highly productive for you. And this is why Uber is willing and can convince its people. They need to control this business because there's so much business in buying the services and not the drive. It's about the service, yeah, yeah. not the drive, because people will not buy cars anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A world of taxis. You're stupid if you're gonna have a car just with a gym when you can have different cars for every ride. Just it's so about you know, service. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, my equity firm got a pitch by a company, I can't talk about it, it's confidential, but. You're on the recording. 
but it was but it was uh, um, it was in meeting. So I uh, so I want to go from using your example. I want to go from location to location, uh, location A to location B. But this uh, autonomous car, it was autonomous, hundred percent autonomous. But, um, uh, if I wanted to have a meeting, I could have a meeting like a boardroom meeting in the car. Yes. And the other option was I could sleep. And then read. Dear, I'm I'm a, I'm a, an innovator. I have a list of 2,500 entertainment elements inside these boxes. It's wow. not just an idea that I have because I'm a systematic person. <laughs> I, I have a whole list. I have a list of the jobs of the future before, before the future knows it. I, I can that. tell you about 250 new jobs in 2040 that I already know about them today. Wow. I have a list because I work in matrices and I work in systematic way. And I have a list for everything. There's a list of jobs of 2040. And there are, there are a list of autonomous cars, you know, rides. Because until today, you can look at the ride as waste. The ride itself is waste. I mean, maybe you enjoy driving, but not in rush hour. Okay? No. So these matrices, I work this way. And I do analysis. So I, when I do my consulting to those companies around the world, when I do some consulting, because I, I have to do other jobs that I have on my on my on, on my head, so so it's it's about people come and oh I have an idea about something really I'll create for you eleven thousand four hundred and seventy three ideas on this subject because I do it systematically, mm. and now let's choose what will be the easiest one to implement in the next two years in order to start to make money and then implement the rest of them, and bring the investment to the right point. You I'm see. So. It's, not, it's not about the idea of the product that is worth the investment. It's about the people that will manage it. Mm -hmm. Always. That's true. I've seen great ideas with lousy managers. They never made it. Yeah. Never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I tell you a quick story related to this? Yeah. If you go to Home Depot, there's a, and you, you want to get a, you know, these mouse traps. There's yes. a company that's all over the U.S. or at least um, there's this mouse strap. It's a iron, like a piece of iron that hits the mouse and kind of catches the mouse like that. It's all over Home Depot for sure. Yes. Uh, so they have a competitor, and this competitor had a far superior product, like far superior product, but they didn't have good marketing. And so what uh, what this company did, uh, the one with the with the string thing they bought the competitor and, and because they had a good management, they had system structure, support, like all that. And then somebody in management said, but we still have 60 tons of string in the inventory. Although that guy has a superior product, we still have 60 tons of inventory of the string that we bought. Yeah. So yeah. they killed, they killed the superior product. And today, <laughs> when you and me go to Home Depot, Unbelievable. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> so you talk about management. I understand. Yes, that's all management. You know, stability of management. <coughs> no. look, look, at the, look, at, 